So greetings and welcome to everyone. It's wonderful to have all of you with us today. My name is Sekita Haridi and I'm the program manager at the Sadhguru Center for a Conscious Planet and also an instructor in anesthesia at Harvard Medical School. Um, we're very happy to welcome you to the Sadhguru Center speaker series today where we uh, present lectures and discussions highlighting the research and explorations of our multidisciplinary community of scientists, global experts, and thought leaders. Um, Dr. Bala, if you could share. So for those of you who are joining us for the first time, the Sadhguru Center for a Conscious Planet is a multidisciplinary research center based at the Department of Anesthesia, Critical Care, and Pain Medicine at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, which is a Harvard affiliate hospital. The center aims to bring tools of well-being to patients, healthcare providers, and the larger community to enhance consciousness, cognition, and compassion. And our work is at the nexus of research, education, and outreach. We offer wellness programs, conduct scientific research studies, and bring together world leaders from diverse fields to collaborate and innovate health and well-being solutions. Today, it's my privilege to introduce to you our speakers, um, Adguru Center's Director, Dr. Bala Subramaniam, and Dr. Sento Sadashivan from University of Pittsburgh. They will be discussing the topic of uh, investigating advanced medication program to improve physical and mental health. A little bit about our speakers today. Dr. Bala Subramaniam received his medical degree from the Waharlal Institute of Postgraduate Medical Education and, and Research, Jipmer Pondicherry, India, and completed his residency in anesthesiology at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, India, and postdoctoral training and fellowship in anesthesia at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. He also obtained an, uh, a master's in, pop, uh, in public health from uh, Harvard School of Public Health. And from 2014 to 2020, he served as the director of the Center for Anesthesia Research Excellence. In 2019, he was appointed as the very first incumbent of the Ellison G. Pierce Chair of Anesthesia at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Dr. Subramanian's research focuses on improving perioperative outcomes and more recently on the benefits of yoga and meditation practices on health outcomes and general well-being. In November 2020, he launched the Sadhguru Center for Conscious Planet here at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. And our other speaker, Dr. Sanjay Sadashivam, um, he began his medical training at uh, Tanjavar Medical uh, College in India. He completed his anesthesiology residencies at All India Institute of Medical Sciences and Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, Harvard Medical School. He is currently the Executive Vice Chair for Clinical uh, Quality, Patient Safety, and Clinical Research, also Director of Preoperative Research and Director of Preoperative Genomics Program. He's also a, a professor at the University of Pittsburgh. His research interests are in pain management, human well being, and spirituality. Thank you so much, Sento and Bala, for joining us, and uh, please take care. Thank you, Thank you. Sapire. Namaskaram. Thank you, Sapire. Namaskaram, everyone. And thank you for joining this uh, exciting program. And it's actually great to talk to Sento at a professional level. He has been my friend for almost 25 years. It brings a lot more joy when you can combine profession with passion. We'll spend the next 40 minutes or so talking about uh, the Samima study that was done, I think, in 2018 at the IIII uh, that I was fortunate to take part with you as the lead in Central. Um, so in the Sadhguru Center uh, for Conscious Planet that I'm privileged to start, basically, we're trying to combine spirituality and science and trying to bring them closer. They have a lot to offer each other and spiritually experiential and can be in leaps and bounds, whereas science is more incremental and methodical. So for those in the audience who are not aware of what Samyama is, here you go. I think most of you know what Samyama is. And Sadhguru often um, talks about Samyama as, um, you know, a, a day complete silence program with long hours of meditation. It provides the possibility for individuals to free themselves from the bonds of karma 
and purify the system, opening them up um, to subtler realms of experience. The program presents the potential for participants to reach heightened levels of consciousness and experience explosive states of meditativeness in the presence of Sadhguru. This has been the most significant thing I've done ever, says Austin Nashville. All these days I only read about peace or saw people talking about peace, but I actually felt peace only here, says uh, Kalilu Rahman from Coimbatore. Samima for me made me look much deeper in so many aspects, says Aparna from USA. So, um, you know, I've been fortunate to take part in this program at least twice as a participant, and um, that really left me dumbfounded and actually made me more, a little bit more um, confident to talk about things because it is such an experiential program. So um, here we wanna just take you through the study a little bit and give the context of what was done. So we're lucky to also, uh, and privileged to share that this paper was recently accepted in Fontes in Psychology called Isha Yoga Practices and Participation in Samyama Program are associated with reduced hemoglobin A1C and systemic inflammation, improved lipid profile, short-term and sustained improvement in mental health. This was a prospective observational study of meditators with a very large body of people. And you can see this was a collaborative study and Santhal was a lead uh, investigator. He was um, very kind with his time, with his funding and also design, getting the IRB approval and went to for and above beyond anyone's expectations to orchestrate this study. And Suresh is a, a physician uh, who's become a full-time volunteer now. He's from, uh, he's a surgeon from Kentucky. Raj Matri is an ophthalmologist from uh, Indiana. Amy Williams, psychologist. Ramana is a, a PhD postdoc in Indiana. Sepide is a PhD here. Mayur, PhD from Berkeley. Dhanashri from um, Central Research Coordinator. San Sangeet, an intensivist from Indiana. Santo is an anesthesiologist in Indiana. And uh, we have statisticians, Chitra from radiology. Janal is a writing specialist from Indiana. Tracy Chang, Rutgers, psychologist and myself. So we'll talk a little bit more about this study. Santo, you know, what motivated you to do the study? And, uh, you know, can you give a little bit insight into the motivation, the funding and your vision for doing this very large study. Thank you, Bala. And uh, so uh, I've been doing meditation for six, seven years now. And uh, when I did the BSP and uh, Shambhavi, I then always wanted to uh, go deeper. This is a great opportunity, not only to participate in Samyama and also uh, study it. I'm a, a researcher myself. Um, I, I do other research besides the spirituality research. And uh, for physicians uh, to show objective evidence is important. And we know uh, meditation and the spirituality is non-physical, but it has uh, significant body uh, benefits and mind benefits. Uh, to show physicians and the scientific community that, that there are objective physiological benefits to body and mind, uh, we needed a, a study. And uh, so we were able to uh, uh, do this with uh, Sadhguru's blessings. Everything fell in place in rapid, rapidly. We were able to design the study. All the people who uh, Bala mentioned were able to uh, get this uh, study designed within record time, one week. And typically IRB takes uh, two months to review and approve. We were able to get it done in uh, uh, eight days. Uh, right in time for uh, just before the Samyama uh, preparation. As you know, the Samyama uh, uh, is only a day program, but uh, it proceeds with at least two months of preparation. So this is a timeline. And uh, so I will go through that. And before that, I wanted to say uh, what motivated me. And uh, I was uh, blown away by many meditation programs, was never so happy in my life uh, uh, so I was with BSP program. Then if BSP was so good and uh, I thought Samyama will be even better and a lot of meditation programs, we wanted to study that. So before the Samyama study, we uh, did study the BSP um, uh, program and we showed for first time uh, the happiness uh, people experience after BSP is from endocannabinoid. Uh, it's anandamide 
is the major endocannabinoid, which was released significantly, uh, almost two to threefold higher uh, in BSP participants compared to their own baseline before the BSP program. And also it was associated with a significant reduction in anxiety and depression. And we wanted to take uh, uh, the research to the next level. And as you know, the Samyama program was uh, organized in uh, April 2018. And uh, people uh, from the US and other countries participated. And we were able to uh, do the study uh, and collect samples throughout the US and uh, do brain scans throughout the US and uh, collect other uh, samples, including genetic samples, uh, microbiome samples. It's a big organization. Uh, I, I do NIH research. It will take close to $3 million to do it. Fortunately, we were able to do for half a million dollars. And with, uh, also with uh, triple I's uh, support and uh, Sadhguru's blessings. We'll get into the study. So uh, you can see uh, this program, the Samyama program was in April, 2018 and the first week of April. And uh, the, the pre-program was um, uh, the two months before that. Then we had to do uh, er everything, including the IRB approval and the study design and uh, reaching out to people to collect blood samples at their own home settings. Um, so we were able to do that uh, quickly within a month or so or less than a month. Then uh, the pre-program, as you know, uh, for participating in Samyama, uh, you have to have at least uh, participated in all four uh, programs, uh, starting with uh, Shambhavi, Shunya, BSP, and Yogasanas. And besides that, uh, the IIII uh, instructor uh, will screen uh, participants or potentially interested uh, people, uh, and also their commitment to uh, continuing these practices for at least two months before Samyama and sticking to the vegan diet, raw vegan diet for at least two months uh, before the program. So uh, after uh, we got a buy-in from uh, IIII and we got the list of uh, uh, Samyama participants from IIII. And uh, then uh, we shared uh, our invitation letter to participate in the research with all the uh, uh, participants. And also uh, not only we invited the participants to participate in the study, it also invited their uh, significant others um, from the same household to participate as a control uh, group. And as you can see, um, uh, many people, uh, I think there were about 1,000 people who uh, registered for Samyama uh, two months before the program. And we were able to reach out to almost all of them uh, with our uh, surveys. So we have uh, four time points. So uh, I think we not only uh, did blood samples and MRI studies, we also did psychological survey, how they uh, felt about their anxiety, depression, joy, vitality, we'll go into that detail. So that's the time point one, we did the survey monkey survey, uh, asking uh, 20, 30 minutes worth of questions. Uh, we used validated survey, psychological surveys at four different time points. The time point one, was uh, two months before uh, the program. And the time point two, you can see here on uh, March 31st, but well, one week before uh, the Samyama program. Then time point three was immediately after Samyama program within a week after Samyama program. Then the last time point was time point four, which was uh, four months, uh, three months after um, the Samyama program. So this is a very longitudinal study, prospectively designed. So you can see that uh, it, uh, the, the span was uh, almost 30 weeks and almost half a year, uh, the, the whole uh, year of uh, 20, uh, 2018. So 2018, the first half of the year, we were uh, collecting data over different time points. This is the largest study of meditators and um, involving uh, multiple states in the US and also multiple countries. The survey was open to throughout the uh, participants from throughout the world. And uh, so that's why we have more people participating in the survey. We were limited uh, uh, on uh, the blood samples, not only because of uh, the physical distance, also because of uh, monetary uh, funds. And uh, we were able to uh, get all these uh, done uh, in timely fashion because of all the volunteers we had throughout the country. And uh, the volunteers, Isha volunteers uh, at uh, centers, 
uh, Sadhguru centers throughout the, the country, they were able to collect blood samples and send them to uh, our labs uh, in India when I was there. Yeah, yeah, this is a uh, brilliant, you know, it's the largest study and a lot of funding uh, coming from your lab and mostly the collaborators and also the meditators who not only took part in the study, but also orchestrated the sample uh, delivery and all of that. It's just a huge uh, blessing for us to do it. It's impressive uh, to have this large study with many more offshoots to come out of this. So we can talk about, you know, what else is coming uh, from this study. So I just wanted to, um, you know, uh, look at this table of, uh, you know, whatever you told, just look at the, go through the samples and the number of patients, you know, participants who were there when you started off and how we ended up with the number later on. Okay. You want to just briefly talk about the numbers? Yeah. So we started with the enrollment um, at uh, time point one, uh, which is uh, two months before um, the preparation. You can see uh, there were almost 1,045 uh, Samyama um, participants uh, who are registered for the program. The, uh, once they registered, uh, uh, IIII uh, shared the list, uh, uh, mainly the email and the name. So we were able to reach out to uh, all the participants to see whether they're interested in research, um, mainly uh, to show that uh, this program, uh, program's ability to improve physical uh, benefits and provide the mental benefits. So but almost everyone was interested and we had a lot of positive comments. So you can see uh, there are two groups. One is the actual Samyama participants. Then also uh, some of the participants, Samyama participants, meditators, were able to recruit their uh, significant others from the household. So uh, we started with the 1,045 uh, Samyama participants and 126 uh, household controls, uh, wives or husbands or significant others uh, in the same household. So we assigned them to two groups. The group on the left is all meditators, group on the right is all controls. The controls are non-meditators and uh, so they did not participate in any, uh, any meditation or some EMA program or any other major uh, meditation program. And so we did the uh, time point one, which is called T1, uh, the initial survey. And uh, so we included uh, the surveys for depression, anxiety, and also positive behaviors, uh, uh, in, including joy, mindfulness, uh, focus. Uh, so we were able to collect that um, with the survey monkey. So even though we sent uh, for the inv invited all thousand plus people, we got uh, almost 75% uh, response, positive response. And uh, uh, almost uh, more than 50% of them completed their survey. Then in time point two, which is two months after time point one, just within a week before uh, actual uh, eight day residential Samyama program, we did the second survey. We wanted to see how uh, even before Samyama program, all the two months of preparation, the vegan diet, how it influenced their behavior. Um, uh, so we wanted to collect that data. So we sent uh, the same number of uh, emails and um, then some people dropped off. We were not able to, um, even though they registered uh, for some EMA, some people dropped off uh, from even doing the program for different reasons. So uh, 451 people still um, uh, responded and completed the survey at time point two. And the, the controls, I can see simultaneously, um, the, the controls are household um, people and uh, significant others. They are not as motivated as uh, meditators. I think uh, we, we had only less number of people to start with, 126. And at the, by the time we uh, got to time point two, we had only uh, 36 um, household controls. Then we did uh, uh, the time point three. Uh, this is the actual number of people who participated in some EMO program, uh, 860 in 2018. Then we reached out to all of them and uh, almost more than 50% of them uh, completed the survey, which is significant uh, compared to uh, other large studies uh, with no incentive. And uh, that shows uh, the meditators uh, interest in uh, showing um, benefits uh, in, with this research. So the, the, even though it's only 50 plus percent, it's significantly higher compared to any other large meditation studies out there. Yeah. Then, uh, since uh, the controls did not do any uh, major intervention like Samyama, the eight-day residential program, uh, there was no point in doing 
another survey at 10.3. So we dropped that just to make sure we are not causing a lot of burden because uh, everyone has to spend at least uh, 20 minutes to complete the online survey. Then we collected uh, a 10.4, almost three months after Samima program, uh, we did the same survey. We also included some new measures, how they, um, how, what, what, what are the differences uh, compared to their baseline state before Samima versus uh, three months uh, later. And uh, I think I accepted two people. Uh, we were able to reach out to almost everyone. And as you can see, uh, almost uh, one third of uh, participants still responded and completed the survey. And uh, at 10.4, uh, we had only 15 controls. We were limited by um, uh, their willingness to complete the survey and their time. And also the IRB did not allow us to repeatedly to remind them. Uh, so we had some limitations, uh, how many times we can uh, remind um, the participants and their controls. So it's another thing I just want to say that, you know, even for meditators, taking the level of participation like Samima, um, we had a very good response, 286, you know, in any survey literature is great, but still, um, if people would have participated more in just filling up these surveys, we would have had 100% participation. So which we are also repeatedly finding in other studies where even the best motivated meditator can drop off the study. And that makes it really difficult for us to, you know, um, have all the data that we need. But still, we have so many people, like 300 people, that's a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Even the 300 is uh, probably the largest study we have uh, yeah. ever self, uh, done. So this is a significant number of uh, meditators. Then if you go to the analysis part, and uh, so uh, we want to analyze uh, uh, the Samyama meditators who had uh, data at all time, all four time points. Even if we, if one uh, meditator missed out one of the time points, say say time point three or time point four, we did not include them in the analysis. We wanted to keep uh, the Samyama meditator as his or her own control. We wanted to see how everyone progressed over uh, four time, different time points. So that's why uh, even though we had uh, 286, uh, by excluding people who did not complete one or two surveys at, at different uh, time points, uh, we finally ended up uh, having close to uh, 200 um, Samyam um, meditators. This also and creates the problem of missing data, right? And so for publication, it makes it really difficult as reviewers will ask you for missing data. How did you impute and how did they behave, et cetera? It, this might have been just simply a case of forgetting to do the surveys, but yeah. we just kind of yeah, so I think for meditators who are out there, so we would be doing a lot more studies in future. <laughs> if you participate in study, please complete the study. And this is the tip of the iceberg. What I'm saying, is this is a representative of all the meditators. Even though they dropped out, that doesn't mean they didn't have the benefits. Probably for some reason or other, they were busy or they didn't get the email or didn't open or went to spam. They did not complete the survey for some reason. But all the findings we had was, uh, shows that um, it's applicable to all the meditators and uh, it is reflective of the whole program and the benefit it offered uh, to all the participants. Right, so, so uh, I just wanted to anchor here a little bit before we go to the data uh, and what we found, right? Um, even before Samima, as you mentioned, preparation is a key and the preparatory steps itself is so intense with so many components in it. So I just wanted to give some evidence for the preparatory components itself changing several things. And on top of that, when you go for a retreat, you see further changes for the better, right? So we just want to show a little bit about, we start off with inner engineering online. So this study, which probably many people have seen already, with just the seven online modules, there was a significant drop in their stress levels. Uh, you can see that blue line, just the perceived stress score. And then uh, now Sadhguru is doing inner engineering completion online. That is once they've done the inner engineering online, you go to the completion piece and we were able to record some of this data from last year when they completed about 174 participants. Um, when you see that all scores, whether it's stress score, sleep quality index, awareness score, uh, positive uh, emotions, et cetera, highly, highly significantly uh, for the better with, um, with these uh, uh, completion online. So even if it is a completion program given online, it is still significantly effective. So we can see that 
baseline 13.5 immediately after online completion you get to a score of 12 but when you practice continuously over the next six weeks you have a significant reduction so again it gives you the importance of why you need to stick to the practice and then you know realize the benefits if you stop in the middle you're not going to realize the benefits so that is the inner engineering online and the completion program and separately the group from uh, deepak chopra and christine tara peterson they looked at Shambhavi itself and they've shown significant reduction in stress and increased well-being. Um, so optimum practice times is at least six times a week. So it's important to stick to your practices. This is what Senthil referred to. This was the first study he did. He led with um, other um, collaborators where he was able to show with the BSP program that the depression levels were significantly low right after the BSP. Anxiety levels were significantly low. And this is probably mediated by increased anandamide levels. This is all straight from his paper. And BDNF levels uh, were also higher. Um, and then like another integral part of preparation is the Shunya meditation. So separate group uh, which looked at Shunya meditation with Himalayan yoga and um, also Vipassana, they were able to show that increased gamma power in this patient, which is associated with uh, more learning and executive control networks. So it seems like regular Shunya practices also helps independent of all these things that we talked about. And last year, when we looked at uh, regular Isha Yoga practitioners, right? So it's a very complicated study design, but just to let you know that we looked at all participants from all around US, dominated by Northeast Texas and California, the major participants, everybody almost over um, 18 to 20 weeks of COVID, when even before the vaccination came, Always look at this green line. Always the regular practitioners of energy engineering techniques, whether Shambhavi or more than that, always had the lowest level of stress. We are talking about 5,000 inner engineering participants. That's a really the largest number compared to age, gender, and zip code, especially at baseline, 2,500 controls who never had any yoga. Based, they had the higher levels of perceived stress scale. Even a simple Simakriya practice seemed to uh, benefit them. Same story for the well-being. So it's very important to stick to the practices and carry on uh, with that. So let's just switch back to the Samyama results and um, I'll allow Santul to uh, talk about the baseline demographics and other uh, findings that we have. Go ahead, Santul. Yeah, so, uh, so you can see uh, predominantly the most of the people um, who completed the survey, the 195 Samyama participants um, are predominantly uh, Indian origin, Asian Indian origin. And also we had significant, uh, almost one fifth of them are um, uh, Caucasians. And uh, we also had some uh, Far East uh, Asians, uh, the Chinese and Japanese in origin. And also we had other races, but predominantly it was uh, Asian Indians and uh, whites. And the controls are typically uh, significant others. Uh, so uh, it, it was corresponding uh, race uh, and ethnicity matched. So we, we had, uh, almost uh, equal number of males and females, uh, almost 50, 50%, 50 55, 45. And uh, you can see um, the vegan diet, the raw vegan diet alone, I was uh, uh, completed by 25% of the people, but may, may most of them, almost more than 90% of them uh, said they are vegetarians and uh, to start with. And uh, that proportion was slightly less on the controls. And uh, the age-wise, uh, uh, it's comparable uh, between the controls and the Samyama meditators. And one major difference we found was uh, the weight. And the Samyama meditators, uh, even to, when they started the program, they were a little bit lighter and uh, weight. And, um, and the other major differences, the vegan diet was practiced by 25% of uh, Samyama practitioners even at the beginning. Uh, then it went up to close to 90% during the time point two and time point three. Uh, time point three was almost 100% during the Samyama program. Everyone was given only the vegan food. Um, compared to that, uh, the controls, uh, only 7% are were vegans. Well, I'm going to go to the next slide. So uh, here we show the mental health benefits. So we Bala talked about uh, uh, inner engineering online, a BSP program, Shunya program making differences. And the Samyama program is almost culmination of everything. And uh, it's a combination of everything. 
and it's the, the most advanced uh, meditation program uh, uh, someone uh, who's not in sannyasi pathway can do. So we wanted to see the benefits and we can see this is almost unheard of and almost 50% reduction in depression and anxiety without any medications and um, without any adverse effects. So with only the benefit, which is almost unheard of even with the, any other meditation program. So we can see there are two lines. People who had almost no depression to start with uh, stayed uh, low. And you can see at time point three, which is the post intervention is immediately after uh, some EMA program. They had the lowest uh, depression score right after some EMA. And uh, even at time point four, it was below the baseline. And uh, what other line, the black line on the top, those are the some EMA uh, participants who reported a significant uh, clinical uh, depression to start with. Any score about 10 is uh, clinically significant depression that would need medication treatment. And we can see uh, even just uh, two months of preparatory practices and that decreased the score significantly. And the Samyama program further decreased uh, to the lowest level possible. And these patients, not patients, these uh, Samyama uh, participants uh, continue to have lower uh, depression scores compared to their, where they started uh, before the Samyama program. That's pretty significant. Even medications, the antidepressants don't achieve this kind of results. And the same is true for anxiety. And those, uh, the, the bottom uh, figure on the left side, the red line is uh, those who did not have significant anxiety to start with. Even they had lowest uh, anxiety scores immediately after Samyama. And those re who reported uh, clinical anxiety needing almost medications, but these were not on medications. You can see uh, they, their uh, anxiety significantly reduced with preparation, further decreased uh, after some EMA program, almost stayed low uh, throughout uh, even uh, to three months uh, after pro program. So this is on the left side is all on the, the negative emotions, anxiety, depression. On the right side, we have positive emotions, including mindfulness, joy, vitality and resilience. You can see all uh, po positive emotions increased over time and with the preparation and with uh, some EMA program, everything increased. And there was some drop off. Uh, some people, some, some of the meditators uh, stopped practicing some EMA, but it never came back to the baseline. And you can see the joy, uh, even after uh, three months after the some EMA program continued to increase. Uh, one of the reasons is uh, the, the endocannabinoids uh, are released. There is a genetic uh, programming and also um, expression of anandamide increases over time. So that can explain uh, continued increase in joy and happiness um, in the meditators. Want to go to the next slide, Dabala? Yeah. Um, I also want to say that, you know, even though we thought these are the places where we make a difference, there may be other benefits that we are not measuring, that there may be other benefits that we don't know how to measure. And so from what we know from this kind of research, probably these are, this is what made the most sense. Yeah, the spirituality we cannot measure, it's non-physical. There's no measure for uh, measuring spirituality. So that we went with the um, physiological uh, uh, that would reflect the body and also the mental benefits. So they are re reflective of spiritual benefits. Then also we went uh, one step beyond to show objective evidence uh, in blood. And we uh, collected blood uh, from uh, almost uh, 150 people from their home settings throughout the country uh, with all the volunteers, Isha volunteer support. Uh, they uh, gave a lot of their time and uh, support uh, for collecting blood samples and uh, send these samples uh, to us with all the centrifuge and everything. Um, and I spoke with uh, Suresh more than with my wife at the time so because of all the coordination. So it was wonderful to have uh, Suresh and everyone uh, helping and supporting and coordinating uh, uh, for a large study like this with uh, almost minimal um, uh, amount of money. We can see that we measured hemoglobin levels and the hemoglobin A1C, which is uh, reflective of uh, how much sugar is bound to the hemoglobin. Uh, uh, and it is a measure of uh, even uh, patients with the diabetes, uh, that's an uh, uh, indicator of uh, their sugar control. Then we also measured the C-reactive protein, which is an uh, indicator of systemic inflammation. 
Then we measured multiple lipids, including the good cholesterol, which is HDL, then bad cholesterol, LDL, then actual cholesterol, uh, then triglycerides. You can see um, the meditators were on a raw vegan diet for two months. Here we can, in the x-axis, we have time point one, two, three, four. And uh, the y-axis is different parameters, uh, different blood biomarkers. You can see uh, the controls are uh, in red color and the participants are the Samyama meditators. You can see the Samyama meditators had a drop in hemoglobin. That is anticipated when someone is on a vegan diet, there is no uh, vitamin uh, B12 and other important vitamins to um, make a hemoglobin. They had a temporary drop in hemoglobin and it increased significantly and back, came back to a normal uh, level or their baseline level at uh, time point three uh, with, with immediately after Samyama. That, that stayed there. And uh, uh, on the other hand, the controls had a lower hemoglobin compared to um, the Samyama participants at time point four, which was lower than when they started. And uh, so uh, I want to point out the benefits. The, the hemoglobin A1C was very low, which is a good thing uh, in, uh, that happened in the Samyama participants right before the program. And as you can see, uh, the, it's, uh, the raw vegan diet or vegetarian diet is a lot of carbohydrates. Despite that, uh, they had a low hemoglobin A1C. And uh, the most important finding, uh, this is a take home message, um, is the systemic inflammation me measured in terms of C-reactive protein. Almost uh, the black line is the meditators control compared to the, their own household controls, eating the same food or living in the same life uh, life, uh, the meditators had two to three fold lower levels of C-reactive pro protein, which is significant finding that, that shows their systemic uh, inflammation is a lot less in meditators. Uh, this lower systemic uh, inflammation is associated with better cardiac health, um, better um, uh, control for hypertension and all other uh, disease, and also uh, low risk for cancers. And we, we did not follow these uh, participants beyond three months, I think if we reach out to them, uh, we would be able to show significant difference in other comorbidities uh, in these uh, participants. So the, the what, Another important impressive thing was also this uh, HDL increase with the vegan diet, right? Yeah. The HDL is a good cholesterol uh, that increases with the exercise. There were a lot of uh, uh, kriyas, yogasanas, um, uh, during uh, the, between the time point one and two, and also it continued. I think uh, some of the increase could be uh, related to, I would say the physical bodily uh, movements and exercise and also yogasanas, kriyas, um, and also the vegan diet, uh, the healthier diet maybe uh, that contributed to a significant increase in uh, the good cholesterol, HDL. Then it stayed uh, high at even at time point three. Some of the participants uh, dropped off from following vegan diet or vegetarian diet uh, after time point three. Uh, we did not ask their uh, diet history at time point three. Then the good, the bad cholesterol. You can see, uh, even though we did not show a significant difference, you can see the the two curves are so different. And uh, the bad cholesterol was a lot lower uh, in the Samyama participants compared compared to their own household controls. And same was true for total cholesterol and also triglycerides. So the lipid profile was a lot more favorable uh, even at the beginning and uh, throughout the uh, program, time point two, time point three, and time four, four compared to their own uh, controls um, in this program. That yes, shows a very objective uh, evidence. So the psychological benefits can say, uh, you feel anxiety, depression, it's a, your thing. And, but others cannot empathize, but uh, objective data, this is a blood biomarker we measured uh, in a lab with, uh, without any um, uh, indication of a blinded uh, measurement that showed objective improvement in all these um, parameters. And Sadhguru always wanted to show uh, hard data uh, versus soft data, hard data meaning objective data. We were able to show simultaneously uh, significant uh, bodily improvement and physiological health improvement uh, with important data. So for me, the, even uh, they're committing to Samema, that means they are probably doing their practices regularly, even at baseline. So when you look at the baseline inflammation differences at CRP, baseline differences in the LDL, triglycerides, et cetera, that itself is 
again, an indication that if you do your regular practices, uh, even before you come to Samima, you already have very favorable bi you know, biochemical profile uh, for risk, right? So that's fascinating. I wanted to spend some more time on the other paper that's coming up. So the major findings, uh, correct me if I am wrong, it's basically significant lower anxiety and depression, especially if you start off very high. And it outlasted and lasted even for three months after the retreat, which was very impressive. And you, saw, you mentioned about the increased mindfulness, joy, vitality, and resilience. Objectively, you showed lower systemic inflammation, especially during COVID times. I think it's so important that you are starting off at a higher advantage when you have a low inflammation. Even if you get infected, you probably have a better outcome because to begin with, you had a better profile. Higher HDL and the lower hemoglobin AMC that you mentioned. So I just wanted to switch gears a little bit and talk about this paper that is coming out. Samima itself, I think, led to many other studies, right? Collecting the data. So this was a second study that came out uh, from, uh, from that work, again, uh, led by Ramana, who's in your lab, and uh, yourself a senior author, and Trupa, who's not a meditator, but from uh, radiology and Kestas from here, from Sadhguru Center, again, not a meditator. So it's nice to have these people who are not meditators, but working on this data and coming out with more objectivity to it. So um, we want to just touch upon the findings that you had in this particular study that is just about to be released. It got accepted about to be released from Pontius, I think. Yeah, I would be happy to. Um, so when we designed the study, we wanted to study not only the psychological benefits and the blood biomarkers, we also wanted to uh, uh, show benefits uh, in the brain. And the only way to do that is by bringing the Samyama participants before and after showing changes in the brain. So that's what we did in this study. And in addition, we also did simultaneously collected their stool samples to see how the microbiome changed uh, over time. So we were able to collect more than 500 uh, stool samples. We, are, uh, we have some positive findings. We will be publishing that soon. Uh, then we also measured lipid levels in um, blood lipidomic study. So that will be coming out. There's another study which is already accepted in PNAS recently, um, led by uh, Vijay uh, Chandran from Florida. Uh, that shows them genetic changes uh, with the Samyama. This is one Samyama program, one study, but we had multiple um, findings. We wanted to show objective evidences for each. So in this particular uh, uh, brain MRI study, uh, we recruited uh, the Samyama participants who can travel to Indiana before and after Samyama program on their own without any compensation for uh, visiting uh, Indiana University uh, Radiology Lab where we were able to uh, scan them. And also we recruited their household controls who were able to come uh, for the MRI. So uh, you can see uh, we had um, close to 18 Samyama uh, participants and six controls and uh, who were able to come uh, before and after uh, the program, Samyama program for uh, MRI uh, finding, uh, MRI um, of the brain. So we not only did the MRI of brain, mainly the structural change, uh, we looked at the structural changes and also the functional changes, a dynamic functional change during a focused uh, breathing. That's a task oriented and uh, the, uh, I'm not a radiologist. My wife is a radiologist who's part of uh, the study. So uh, we had some uh, smart people uh, who were uh, able to help with the design. Chitra Ram was one of the um, radiologists who contributed to the design part. Then we were able to uh, use some expertise of um, uh, other radiologists who were able to help with the, the functional MRI uh, image analysis. So from what I gather from your study was uh, just to translate it to novices like us with, um, um, with MRI, basically you said that the meditators, once they undergo the Samima program, they can have a complete uh, dynamic control over every portions of their attention, right? Basically, you know, yeah. that, is, that was pretty unique, demonstrate the ability of the meditators to voluntarily and dynamically influence and control um, certain brain connectivity based on meditation related specific tasks such as focus breathing. So it looks like that was a significant finding there. Yeah, I, I think that's a major finding. Uh, and uh, unlike other fMRI studies in uh, other meditation programs, we were able to show one breathing technique during Samyama is uh, focused breath watching. 
And during that uh, program, the meditators were able to control uh, the functional activity uh, of the brain. So uh, I think what that activity shows uh, their focus. They can uh, intently focus and concentrate on things while improving their cognitive ability, executive ability, and mindfulness. Um, so we, we saw increased uh, inter-region connectivity and also uh, during the focus, during the focus breathing, there was decreased uh, activity. They are able to shut down uh, the brain uh, to, when they were focusing on breathing. So that, that's very important. And none of the other uh, MRI studies in meditators have shown that. So yeah, it's, uh, it's like increased cortical executive network function, ability to focus and attend. Our group keeps talking about um, attention as a major thing in our uh, in all these programs. If you can do that indiscriminately, you know, attention towards everything, then that is something really great. And we saw that with this kind of, even though it was a small study, uh, but with committed volunteers uh, participated in it, showing that kind of, you know, paves way for larger studies to come. And one more point, Avala. So we not only showed the brain changes, we also showed that the brain changes were correlating with uh, your uh, yes. mindfulness and atten attentiveness, so which is important. Right. Those who also had a higher mindfulness awareness scale, they, they are the ones who showed this uh, dynamic connectivity. Great. Now this, uh, this is wonderful and we are hoping that uh, Vijay will probably uh, come up with this from University of Florida, will have his paper on the uh, genetic uh, work that he has done. So we won't release anything more than that. That's to come and then we'll have the stools work, the stool samples that you're working with, um, some other meditators and then we'll have uh, um, the lipidomics work coming out of the Samema. There's somebody else who's working on all the blood biomarkers uh, looking at a comprehensive tool to see is everything correlating or not. So that effort is really paying off. And uh, most important thing, the takeaway message is you might feel great for up to three months uh, and even longer, but keeping up with the practices, I think is, a, is an important factor. So with that, you know, we'll open up for questions for the next uh, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, let me see if I can stop sharing and then we'll just go back to the questions. Right. Um, so if there are any questions, uh, Sepide, you may want to lead off the questions. All right, absolutely. Thank you so much for the fascinating work and for the engaging conversation. So one question I can see is uh, from Nidhi. Um, congratulations on a great study and result. Thank you for sharing. Is there any effect on the cortisol levels uh, with meditation? Yeah, the cortisol level we did not purposefully uh, measure. Uh, there, there are, uh, it was subject to uh, a lot of variations, inter-individual variation and time of the day. Uh, so uh, that is not a measure of long-term health or stress. That's why we chose not to measure it. And also it's more expensive uh, on top of everything. So we had to uh, manage everything with a tight budget. So uh, we decided not to do cortisol. So we did not. So on top of that, you know, I want to bring out another study that was published by an independent group um, from the 90-day retreat that happened in 2009. They had a very robust cortisol response in meditators. Um, they, and they also had a threefold increase in BDNF. I think our paper was more like 50%. Uh, the, so yes, it, cortisol uh, responses changes for the better with, um, with the meditation. But for this particular program, we didn't do that. Yeah, that's a published paper. We can send the paper if you're interested. Okay, thank you. So we have another question asking, any studies were done on the sleep pattern of participants post -sanima? Um, We, uh, as part of the survey, we collected uh, their uh, sleep uh, information, how long they were sleeping. Uh, so other than that, we did not collect uh, uh, any other data. So we know how long they slept. Uh, so it, it decreased during sleep during the two month preparation uh, was significantly lower uh, compared to the controls. Other than that, we did not collect any other uh, specific sleep data. I think this yes, is the yeah. only, yeah. Uh, uh, Bala, I am not aware of any other Samyama study, um, Isha Samyama study, other than that this one large study we did. No, no, so there is no other Samima study, but uh, we're doing sleep studies on different participants like Shunya and others. So that is the data which might take another year for us to bring it out. Definitely sleep is of interest and um, we are working on it. 
So next question from Ravi, uh, asking any future plans of looking at serotonin levels? <laughs> yes, we, we have a lot of plans at the same time. We're waiting for funding to even uh, uh, say, for example, uh, we uh, did uh, collect blood samples for many things, in, including methylation, uh, protein levels. Uh, we measured the protein levels, 5,000 proteins in uh, uh, each some amount of participant at uh, different time points. So for even doing that, it, it was like $400 per uh, sample per test. So uh, we wanted to uh, prioritize many things, but we did not measure serotonin. Uh, but that serotonin is included in one of the uh, as one of the 5,000 proteins we measured. Uh, we, we are going to analyze the data. Uh, I think Wallace help. Uh, we have a, a group uh, that would be uh, looking at all the proteins levels, lipid levels, and the blood biomarkers. Uh, we'll be analyzing that data uh, in the next few months. Thank you, Santos. Um, and other questions asking what is the pathophysiology behind all these results? Sorry. Sorry, uh, I'm. Yeah, so uh, the question is, what is the pathophysiology behind all these good results? I think Santal already alluded to the BDNF elevations, the anandamide changes, endocannabinoids, the work from BSP already alludes to increases in all these uh, findings. So they can have multiple effects. Looks like um, the indirect neurotrophic factor has so many effects at so many levels. Um, we are also looking at the 5,000 proteins that Central talked about. He already analyzed it, but that needs to be read in a scientifically meaningful fashion. So maybe you'll find more uh, talking about you know, how this works. Yeah, we, the, the very first step was not the mechanistic aspect of it. We wanted to show the, the physical benefits, mental benefits, so that uh, the whole humanity can take advantage of meditations. And then we would be analyzing the mechanistic aspects, how it changes, and even wh why some uh, participant, BSP participant was so happy and other person was happy, but not as happy as other. What are the genetic variations that is contributing to uh, different anandamide levels, uh, so we are looking at that as well. Um, so we wanted to, the main purpose, the first purpose was to show the benefits uh, to people so that everyone can take advantage of it and objectively. And the second benefit, second uh, aspect is uh, looking at the mechanisms which we are uh, looking at now. We'll be able to share that data hopefully in 2022. Right, so for Pavni's question, I think uh, talking about um, beyond CRP and autoimmune diseases or melatonin, et cetera. Not specifically that, but wait to see this genetic study. It's coming very, very soon. And also uh, the, among the 5,000 proteins, it includes the inflammatory pathway proteins also. We may or may not find anything there, but that is being done. Any studies on effect of these meditations on heart patients or any digestive disorders? So uh, there, is a, in, there is a meditator in Mayo Clinic who is working on uh, patients post heart attack and looking at rehabilitation in them. So that uh, study might show some benefits. So that is in the works. Digestive disorders, especially irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, one of the participants in this call is actually taking part in that particular study. It's in planning stages. So um, we might get to see more of those. Any chance of collaborating with other institutes for fMRI or MEG? Uh, for sure, yes. Um, Please write to us and we're always open to collaborations, Central and our team. And there are other people who are uh, interested in fMRI studies for sure. And also we are looking at the uh, microbiome and uh, that may lead to uh, additional insight into how uh, the microbiome changes and offers uh, mental benefits and uh, other health benefits. Uh, we have analyzed the data that would be out uh, in next year as well. So there are a couple of questions we missed. I think one was, what is the percentage of Samyama participants who start at time one with high anxiety and depression? Uh, do you know that number? You're muted, Santal, you're muted. Sorry. Uh, out of the 195 uh, patients, more, more than 10% had, um, I think 18 had high anxiety, but clinical, uh, 18 or so had high clinical anxiety scores. And uh, about 15 or so had uh, high uh, clinical anxiety scores. So almost 10% of them started with high 
depression and high anxiety needing almost medication, but they were not on medication. Right. Another question from Babesh is whether any sharings from participants, if they recovered from any chronic ailments post some MR. Yes, we, we had a lot of uh, uh, subjective uh, information. We had uh, the survey uh, monkey designed for that. Many people reported there are so many health benefits, but, but we were not able to combine everything. Uh, we had uh, only 195 uh, uh, participants to compare. Many people reported benefits in uh, decreasing antihypertensive medications, uh, going off of uh, uh, the, the insulin treatment for diabetes. So we, we had a lot of even improvement in uh, irritable bowel syndrome or other gut problems. It was so uh, fulfilling to see the benefits. Uh, we, we are, as I mentioned, we are showing the tip of the iceberg and uh, we have not uh, discovered everything uh, the Samyama program offered. There may be a lot more benefits and uh, we, we did not even um, uncover yet. So yeah, Sadhguru often talks about um, Samyama program is something where he experientially realized I'm not the body, I'm not the mind, which you start with Isha Kriya, right? It's the same thing, go full circle, do all this and come back to the simple meditation, Isha Kriya and say it's the same thing that you're trying to do. Probably there is a lot more to uh, you know unravel here, but it's, uh, it's only a beginning and we are very, very thankful to Sadhguru to be even a contemporary to his life. That is a that's a big benefit and he's giving it free of cost for Samyama, which takes so much organization. And it's an unbelievable experience as a commoner, not to be in the ashram and experience that. Um, I believe that transformation itself is so fulfilling for us. And we can do all these things which can be uh, enticing for, um, you know, people who are not in the, into the meditation world, they can look at these benefits and maybe they'll walk into meditation. And once they experience, maybe they don't need these things. But what I find is uh, sticking to the practices, compliance, compliance, compliance is a big deal. And if you're able to stick to the practice that we learn, probably you'll see so many benefits. And I think some of the time one data that you showed uh, is very telling. And the COVID long, I mean, the COVID yoga study that we did in 5,000 participants, even during the peak of COVID, majority of these people had lowest stress levels and highest well-being compared to so many people um, with the same age, gender, from the same geographical area. I, I feel like those are all important takeaways for us to remember. So the one someone says, very, very grateful for the work you guys are doing. Again, thank you, Santo, for orchestrating such a big study. Like you mentioned, it's like a $3 million study which was done with the help of so many volunteers, your funding, your lead IRB, uh, it's just unbelievable. We can't think of doing this over again in that short time frame. Yeah, it's a Sadhguru's blessings and all the volunteers support and the research teams are so uh, much time and commitment. So, and um, uh, I, I think I wish we could do this study again. So hopefully there will be another some of Let me ask a question. If you have to do this study again, what will you change? One or two things. <laughs> um, definitely, uh, we can learn from our experience. And uh, so we were, uh, depending on the volunteers who did not have any experience, uh, who collected the blood samples and other things. And uh, so there are so many things. I, I don't want to take too much time. Uh, that, that we would definitely do with funding and so that we can do a, a justice to uh, this program because we are not covering even small portion of it. Even though it's a large study, we have done a lot of things. We have uncovered probably a small part of it, so all the benefits. And we don't even know what we are missing out. If you look at the logically, uh, we are missing out a lot of things. The, we cannot measure the spirituality, it's spiritual benefits. So um, there's a lot to come. So we'll think about how to design a better study uh, when there is a next uh, some, some Yama uh, in the US. Yeah, again, th th Sapir, thank you so much for uh, all this. Do you have a question? Sorry. There is, I see one common question, uh, especially from our YouTube audience, asking how they can participate in our study. Bala, you want to go for that? So how can we participate in which one? Upcoming studies. Yeah, so um, if it is from the US, keep an eye for uh, you know emails coming from uh, I advertising our studies, and especially a lot more studies are being planned from Sadhguru Center. We almost have a dozen studies that are planned uh, to come in the this year or next. 
we really want people to stick to the practices, you know, definitely respond to the surveys and definitely, you know, uh, participate and not, not just, you know, taper off. Like even the, the most committed meditators sometimes just um, don't engage in it because they're so busy. But if you have to put out all these things, we need your uh, help to finish these studies. So main ways to know is to look at Sadhguru Center, BADMC Sadhguru Center. We can, if someone can put that in the chat box, the, yeah, so we the web link, uh, that will be one place to look at. Another place is to look for emails from um, IIII to take part in it. We're also trying to form collaborations with uh, several countries where they can have local people doing research like India, specifically Nimans is going to start a large body of work soon. So, you know, people who are in and around Karnataka can take part in it. There's another study that is going to come out of Pune looking at inflammation uh, in various practices. So please take part in that. Um, there are diabetic studies that are being done in a few other locations. So uh, we have, uh, uh, we are engaging in a lot more people, mainly encouraging them to do the studies on their own and just to be a catalyst to inspire them. Uh, hopefully, keep an eye and participate and be compliant with all the questionnaires. And if you have a criticism for us, hey, this is taking too much time, can you make it shorter? Please let us know, we'll adapt. Thank you so Until much. I, I know you have to go for another meeting. Thank you so much, I'll let Sepide finish. Thank you so much, Sandil and Bala for such a wonderful conversation. And I would also like to thank all the collaborators, volunteers and participants who made this study possible. And of course, above all, Sadhguru for making these tools available to all of us. And uh, we're all looking forward to seeing more such studies uh, to show the impact of these practices and well-being. Uh, I would also like to thank all of our wonderful audience who joined us from all different um, spaces around the globe and also for supporting us in, the, in our work. Um, we hope to see you in our next speaker series event on Wednesday, December 15th for a talk by Dr. Ma uh, Michael Goldstein, a neurologist and uh, sleep researcher at Beth Israel Defense Medical Center. Uh, to get more updates um, on future events and programs with the Sadhguru Center, we are posting in the chat the link that you can uh, fill a form and also our email address where you can stay in touch with us. And um, I hope you stay well and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Central, again. Thank you. Um, thank you. Namaskar.